How do you feel being here today? Have you seen this place? It is electric. There are so many happy faces here. People enjoying their time. I am so, so thrilled to be part of this historic occasion. It is incredible. I'm also, I'm so wet. And it's, it's 11 o'clock. It's crazy. Uh, if you're not here, you're really missing out. I don't know, very true. I agree, even me. It's hot in here. Chris, tell us about your journey into public service. Why do you do what you do? What makes you wake up in the morning? What is your why? So, you know what? A lot of people are scared of, of power. But the opposite of power is powerless. And no one wants to be powerless, especially when there's so many problems in our country. So when you're given an opportunity to do something different, when you're given an opportunity to make a difference, then you have to take that power and use it. And there are so many people who abuse power in this country, but there's so many good people like us, like the people here, who are trying to do something different for our country. And that's what motivates me every single day. Now, Chris, you grew up in KZN. You're fluent in Zulu. We've all seen it on social media. What are your plans for your home province? So, you know, we, we all know the big problems. We know, all know about healthcare and education, crime and infrastructure. But all of those things, they are human issues. They are people living in informal settlements who pay rent to unscrupulous landlords. And we have the power to stop that. Our small towns and villages are falling apart. And there's no more opportunities. People are flooding to the cities. So as the provincial government, we need to invest in those small areas in our rural places. We need to find the places where people are suffering and intervene there. But the biggest thing is jobs. If you cannot put bread on the table, there's no dignity in your family. And many, many people feel that every single day. People are hungry in KZN. Hungry for change, but hungry in their stomachs. And there are so many opportunities in our beautiful province to bring about change. And we just need a government to harness that and to drive it instead of being the enemy of change. Wow, wow. Chris, all eyes are on you as our first DA mayor here in KwaZulu-Natal and Ugeni. Can you lay out what are some of the achievements you and your team have already achieved so far? Yeah, sure. So it's been uh, 23 months in government. So we've been, it's still new. Uh, there are still a lot of challenges, uh, as one would expect. But we are so excited about the progress that we've made. We've tripled the roads budget, we've bought 30 million rands worth of equipment, we've increased the number of poor households getting free services from 133 to 1,500. We've started committees, we're fighting against corruption, we've seen employees leave us. So we're so excited about the change that we see every day. Street lights are now working. We are attending to people's service. The government is responding to emails and SMSs. People pick up the phones. So the basic things are being done. Getting the basics right. Yeah, now, Chris, one just needs to look behind us to see that this election is giving South Africans renewed hope. Now we're seeing opposition party leaders as well as civil society leaders coming together to save South Africa. Why is this so important? So, no, we, we have a lot of issues in South Africa and we bicker about a lot. But we all actually have a common vision and a common future. We all believe in the same thing. We want a place where our kids can play together. We want to have opportunities for us and we want to have a future that's better for now than it is yesterday. And the people that you see here believe in that. The people that you see here are saying, you know what, they'll come in here and we'll bicker about and debate about the small things. And it's the same about opposition parties across the country. If we don't change things in 2024 and we continue in the same direction, there won't be much left to say. And that is why we call it the rescue mission. Because we are rescuing what is left of our beautiful land. Perfect. Yeah. Chris, let's look into the future. What does a DA KZN look like when you get elected in 2024? So, I must maybe send a warning to those officials right now. If you've had your fingers in the jar, if you are being corrupting, committing fraud and corruption, then you better leave now. Because soon there will be an eviction notice on the, on the legislature. We have to clean up government. We have to get services to the people. And we have to start spending money right. We can't spend 28 million rand on a music festival while people are hungry and there's sewage running through the streets. So a DA government will get the basic rights and will start with the people first. Now, Chris, I've seen your one plus one equals win campaign. Now, I've never been very good at maths, but I thought that the answer was two. Can you tell us more about this campaign? Your teacher 
is for lying to. One plus one is not two. One plus one is win. And every DA voter in this province gets one other person to vote for the DA. Then we can take case in and bring about real change. So it's not hard. It really isn't hard. The power is in each one of our hands to go to our neighbors, to our children who are 18 and not registered, to go to our employees, our grannies, and say, are you registered? Because we're going to vote. And if every DA voter gets one other DA voter, we can win case in. Chris, that is an incredible campaign. Can you tell us what can we take from Umgeni? What can the rest of the province expect? So what can South Africa expect? So the main thing is that people want to see progress. People want to see a government that works, and people want to see a government that responds when there are issues. People want to see a government that cares and doesn't abuse them. And that's what we are creating in a